Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I sometimes speak on issues which are considered to be controversial, actually not much of the time, but those things that I speak or write or say tend to become better known. Uh, and I'm going to speak on something controversial this evening also. <coughs> controversial means, uh, well, there are controversial issues out concerning affairs of the big bad world outside the little bubble that we live in called ESCON. And there are also um, controversial matters within ESCON, and they, such matters when discussed tend to become more controversial within ESCON. So I'm going to speak on something. Uh, it's I'm not speaking this uh, to attack the institution, or in, nor am I, as previously I was, in any hope of reforming uh, ISKCON, but just to inform devotees who, uh, or give food for thought to devotees who want to accept Srila Prabhupada in the manner that was the norm in his personal presence. We often hear when Srila Prabhupada is quoted nowadays, well, that was 40 years ago and times have changed. Or, um, and in various ways, uh, minimizing, they wouldn't use that word, I'm using that word, minimizing uh, Srila Prabhupada's authority. So this is just to inform devotees who want to accept Srila Prabhupada in the manner that he himself inculcated uh, and as I said there was the norm in his personal presence and uh, it seems uh, that Srila Prabhupada well, he expected to be accepted like that for for the duration of ISKCON therefore he insisted on being called the founder Acharya of ISKCON so I'm going to speak about uh, ISKCON's New theology. First of all, we should think, what is Iskon's old theology, or how we accepted Srila Prabhupada previously? We accepted Srila Prabhupada as our authority. Still, um, everyone will say, yes, Prabhupada is our authority. Um, and even recently there was a booklet published by the GBC about Srila Prabhupada's position as the founder Acharya of ISKCON. It was very good and very nice, but in practical terms, which I'm going to point out, make uh, some points, uh, that is uh, largely lip service, unfortunately. We say that we accept Srila Prabhupada as our, as our authority, but practically uh, that is largely undermined. Um, I did give a lecture on this, when was that, January 2013 it was, I, I called it ISKCON's cancer. And I gave the analogy that with cancer you may not even know you've got it, but it's often when you when you realize it's often too late. So the cancer is that we, we no longer accept Srila Prabhupada in the manner that we used to. And that although everyone thinks, yes, we're all following Prabhupada, actually the whole, moment is, the whole movement is deeply affected by the new theology that we don't accept uh, Srila Prabhupada as a th as authoritative as he expected to be recognized like that. And, and we should recognize him because he's the empowered representative of Krishna. Now, one 
highly likely reason that devotees don't recognize that Srila Prabhupada's mm, teachings in many ways are being minimized because it's often those teachings that are concerned with gender issues, which is an extremely sensitive point. And uh, Srila Prabhupada's teachings, if we examine them from the standpoint of the what is considered normal in uh, contemporary Western society, Srila Prabhupada's teachings would be called sexist, uh, misogynist, that is a word I used when it was first used on the internet to describe myself, it means hater of women, and misogynistic, I guess that would be his teachings, are misogynistic. and uh, homophobic. And in modern society, in the Western world, they're still trying, they're still working on much of the rest of the world and trying to bring them round to the proper way of understanding which they've got, which, uh, which is manifested in American society by the uh, wonderful condition of peace and harmony among all the people. Is it? They have all these ideas that our modern psychological adjustments will make everything if we follow all this, and everything will be very nice, but practically America, unless any of you didn't notice, it's a mess in uh, most ways. And uh, the ways that it's not a mess in, it's rapidly becoming a mess in those ways also. Uh, definitely socially, psychologically, but anyway, they're insistent that this our society is the best in the world and we have to give our gift to the world if they don't accept uh, for instance, that's one of the reasons that uh, to justify the invasion of Afghanistan, that the poor women in Afghanistan, they, they, uh, they don't have enough freedom, like our women over here. They don't have the freedom to go and join the army and invade someone's country, for instance. So, um, yeah, when we speak like this, I know myself, even within ISKCON circles, it because even our devotees are so, it seems, so deeply steeped in uh, ideas of gender equality and uh, actually there's nothing wrong with homosexuality and all these kind of ideas. We're so deeply steeped in it that it's very difficult for us to hear this. But actually, Srila Prabhupada said all these, he had a particular position which is derived from Shastra. And therefore, and, and he regularly spoke on these things. And uh, therefore, if we are to be followers of Srila Prabhupada, we have to accept that. But it can be uh, very difficult if we don't accept Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chite Te Kuriya Aika Ana Kuri Homane Asha, if we don't accept the words of the spiritual master as our life and soul. So it may seem that Srila Prabhupada got something wrong. It's some 19th century Bengali ideas. Well, actually, all over the world, it was the idea of everyone, everywhere, with few exceptions throughout history. Um, And the, and the position of Shastra also. So, we can't maintain both positions. We can't say that, well, minimization of Srila Prabhupada is very bad. Everyone will agree with that within ISKCON, I would hope. Maybe the time is coming when that also will, and even lip service will not be paid to that. So, no, no we should accept everything that Prabhupada says. Most... Uh, I, I hope that most of what is up to the present day would say that. But at the same time, they'll also say that, well, uh, gender equality, it's, it's, that's a must. And uh, we want to maintain both positions. Now, I'm not this evening um, 
going to talk about gender issues per se, although it may seem like that. For that, I have a whole seminar, which is on my website, called Women, Masters or Mothers. But I'm bringing these up because these are issues on which, which is the main thrust of what I'm saying this evening. These are issues on which um, Srila Prabhupada's authority is uh, undermined. Now, it may be said that, well, in the early days of the movement, Srila Prabhupada treated the men and the women equally, um, and then later it changed because some sannyasis became uh, misogynistic, or what's the other word? Uh, chauvinistic, yeah. Thank you. Um, and there were... Uh, but Srila Prabhupada didn't actually approve that. Um, that is questionable, but what is in his books is clear, which is he ascribed the highest authority to. <coughs> and uh, undoubtedly women were mistreated in our movement, but then uh, pretty much everyone was mistreated. And uh, women being the weaker section who should be protected, they uh, seems they were mistreated more or they felt it more. Uh, so uh, when Srila Prabhupada says, for instance, that women are less intelligent, we think, well, he couldn't have he couldn't have meant that. But then he, he says it again and again, and Shastra says it again and again, and it, it may seem to be not correct. Uh, anyway, that point I've discussed in that seminar, I'm going to get, get into that, um, that women, masters and mothers. So we are, we are told that um, women have been mistreated for centuries and that India's in particular is a uh, particularly anti-female culture. Although, even to the present day, although it is breaking down under the pressure of... Uh, Westernization, modernization, up until recently, um, most women in India could get married and be confident of having a husband for life, which in uh, the modern Western world, it, things have changed so much that they don't even want that. So... Um, the idea is that India is a major anti-female culture. Uh, any, yeah, this gang rape thing has become a recent phenomenon in India. It's much highlighted in the press in the Western world. What happened? There was I, I remember reading in the newspapers there was a school shooting in Connecticut in which about fifteen people. 15 kids were killed. And if it was in Harlem, well, maybe if it Connecticut, it's the most civilized place in the world, isn't it? Uh, and then about, so it was all over the press, all over the world. Two days later, there was a gang rape in Delhi. And then, then there was on and on and on and on. They went on and on and on. But, and the Connecticut thing was just buried under that. So, um, uh, There's an, that's another whole issue of how India is, there's a, a deliberate arrangement to give bad press to India. It's well documented in a book called Breaking India by Rajiv Malhotra. It's a thick book with lots of documentation about this. Um, so yeah, these issues are highly emotionally loaded, there appears to be a, a dichotomy between what Srila Prabhupada said on certain issues and what we know to be right. I mean, it's just obviously right that women shouldn't be mistreated, for instance. But, but it's just presumed due to modern feminist propaganda that to not give women the same freedom as men in all respects, that is mistreatment of them. 
it's it's presumed like that. So um, while discussing this, um, we should at least conceptually try to uh, separate the two issues. One is that of gender roles, and that is of Srila Prabhupada's position, although they are interlinked. Uh, if we are emotionally attached to what must be called feminism, then it's going to be uh, very difficult to accept Srila Prabhupada's authority. So, yeah, the what is this new theology? What what has changed? Um, very great difference. One of the many great differences between ISKCON of the 1970s and ISKCON of the 2000 and what do you call it? Teens? Or, is that what it's called? Or ISKCON today is that oh, it is acceptable to openly contradict and reject certain things that Srila Prabhupada says and substitute one's own opinions. Um, now I'm going to quote from a book written in the year 2007 called Hare Krishna Transformed by someone who I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. He's a scholar, Burke Rockford, or Rochford. Or how is it pronounced? Rockford. 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 Yeah. It's, uh, anyway, Burke Rockford, or whatever his name may be, um, called Hare Krishna Transformed, in which he documents how the movement has changed in significant ways. So, um, on the issue of changing of roles of women, he's, he quotes, Prabhupada and his teachings became the source of debate and conflict. Some pro-change women, in partnership with a number of academically trained ISKCON intellectuals, underline that, began to raise questions about Prabhupada's writings on women. This challenge led to a questioning of Prabhupada's as authority as a pure devotee who only repeats Krishna's message as Krishna directs him to do so. Should Prabhupada's commentaries about women be considered eternal truths or products of his education and upbringing in India? Should Prabhupada's collective teachings be considered infallible or were they subject to human error? So, Burke Rogford is discussing how among uh, the more enlightened intellectuals within our movement, um, speaking sarcastically here, um, there was discussion of whether Prabhupada's teachings should be considered infallible or not. Uh, I'm going to interject here, I mean, I'm break the flow and say that um, certain teachings of, Sh or, or Srila Prabhupada himself didn't present himself as infallible on all issues, but he did ascribe the highest authority to his books. So many things Srila Prabhupada said in conversation, um, that on matters of of uh, which could be considered subjective of, about this world, um, he could change his opinion on this. But um, his books, he ascribed the highest authority to. So, uh, continuing this quote from Hari Krishna, transformed. The doubts raised about Prabhupada's authority resulted in a number of angry and hostile reactions that soon found their way to ISKCON's leadership. Despite the outcry about the challenge to Prabhupada's authority, ISKCON's leadership made no formal effort to sanction or otherwise stop those responsible for defaming Prabhupada. This is by a, a neutral scholar. Uh, there's a quote. 
uh, these GBC men did not rise to defend Prabhupada. They did not rise to come to the defense of those who are trying to defend Srila Prabhupada. ISKCON's leaders found themselves in an uncomfortable position. One GBC member decided, he said this to Burke Rockford, it was politically safe just to ignore them. That means myself and others who were pointing this out. It was politically safe just to ignore them, and we did. Uh, mm, so he makes the point that uh, th th that this this signaled a uh, conscious understanding by the GBC that a major culture turn had taken place within the movement and that its significance because it signals the ways in which traditionalism no longer serves as the foundation of ISKCON's religious culture. In embracing gender equality, ISKCON's leaders align the organization with a defining feature of modern liberal culture. The conflict over gender equality opened a Pandora's box that may remain forever open. Yeah, it'll go on. <laughs> it will go on and on. The debate about women's roles and place in ISKCON led to critical questioning of Prabhupada's scriptural commentaries as well as to his overall authority as Krishna's pure representative. The fact that the le this is again, I'm quoting Berg Rockford here. The fact that the leadership failed to act decisively on Prabhupada's behalf was an an, an acknowledgement that his authority no longer was absolute. <clears throat> Given Iskon's increasingly pluralistic membership, it was perhaps inevitable that Prabhupada's teachings would be questioned especially in light of their past misuse resulting in the abuse of devotee women and children. As one ISKCON leader expressed it, there is irreducible diversity within ISKCON. It is a mistake trying to find the straight line. Hmm, interesting. What is important is whether a devotee fits within the boundaries of Prabhupada's teachings. Yet... As these teachings become reframed as guidelines for thought and action in, in place of being absolute truth, traditionalism will continue its march to the margins of ISKCON. That's true. I call myself a traditionalist and I'm on the margins, not in the center, not in the mainstream. Allowed to exist, just about. As it does... As traditionalism continues its, continues its march to the ma margins of ISKCON, the goal of creating a viable cultural alternative to mainstream m American culture will cease to exist. So those of you who were around in the 70s and early 80s re may remember that Srila Prabhupada, uh, we were all well aware that Srila Prabhupada spoke of a uh, cultural conquest uh, and that we were supposed to make a cultural alternative to mainstream American culture, but that, as Burke Rockford um, states here, that's, that's no longer our agenda. Uh, So, a uh, similar point as uh, has been pointed out that um, in the secular world, which has uh, the, the feminist, feminism, with the idea that um, men and women's roles should be Equal or generally, it seems that in feminism they want to promote women as more than men, and actually the law gives the, the law in many countries, including the United States of America and India, actually gives uh, to gives the right to women uh, all just like the uh, in Animal Farm by George Orwell. 
that all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. So uh, definitely uh, women have more what they call rights in the law. So feminism and what are called gay rights, the word gay has been appropriated by homosexuals, um, they go together. When, when feminism is promoted, then uh, gay rights are also promoted. <coughs> um, and they've not been, uh, feminists and gays have not been content with uh, their own little, generally atheistic world, but uh, they've very aggressively invaded all the churches and uh, so that churches, all religions, they want to make their ideology um, universal. So, um, in the year 2004, um, a prominent leader of our movement espoused on the internet uh, the idea that it's better that gays be married uh, rather, th we, we should accommodate that. We should accommodate that within the Krishna consciousness movement. And um, to uphold that, uh, he, he made a paper, he promoted a paper called Vaishnav Moral Theology and Homosexuality. Um, well, here's a quote from that. Uh, he, Although homosexuality is said to have existed since the dawn of creation, the Bhagavatam does not explicitly describe nor proscribe it. Thus, according to Krishna's own statement, quoting from the Mahabharata, since we do not find a specific, explicit, unambiguous set of rules for dealing with homosexuality, we must engage in spiritual reasoning about it. Now, this statement completely ignores the fact that Srila Prabhupada in his commentary describes that the homosexual appetite of one man for another is demoniac. And that Srila Prabhupada, although he did engage uh, homosexuals in Krishna consciousness, he didn't reject them from Krishna consciousness, but he made it very clear that this, uh, yeah, well, he stated that in his purport that the the homosexual appetite of one man for another is demoniac. Now, um, what do we do with that if we don't like it? Well, we can argue against it. But it's Srila Prabhupada's purport as the Acharya, the founder Acharya of ISKCON, whose books are meant to be the guiding books for the International Society for Krishna Consciousness for all generations, he has presented his purports. And the word purport is, um, it may seem like an unusual word. Peop usually you see the word commentary, but Srila Prabhupada gave the word purport, which means this is the meaning. This is what it's meant to, this is what is to be understood from this. So, um, the reasoning here by this Maharaj is that, well, we have to see what's in Shastra. And unless it's in Shastra, we don't accept it. But actually, Shastra is to be understood through Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. And when Srila Prabhupada, in his purport, which he said, this, he's giving a statement uh, which is supposed to be if Prabhupada is authoritative, then his books are the most authoritative statement of what he wants to say, which we understand is given by Krishna. We may not like that because we are in an age in which we are taught that there's nothing wrong with homosex, but according to Srila Prabhupada, there is. Uh, of course, everything in this material world is 
polluted, but some things are worse than others, clearly. So, um, yeah, the, the, the Maharaj writes that we do not find a specific, explicit, unambiguous set of rules for dealing with homosexuality, but we do find a specific, explicit, and un unambiguous statement from Srila Prabhupada which he completely ignores because it doesn't fit with his own ideology. So this is uh, similar to what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Vallabha Bhatta. We find in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Shami namane jejan beisha bitare tare kare gonam, kare gonam. Those who don't follow the authority of Sridha Swami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, he considers them to be like a prostitute. It's very heavy words, but spiritual topics are uh, very heavy. Uh, these, you may say, well, it's just a small difference, but it, it has very serious implications for our own understanding of Prabhupada's authority and how we approach his books. We're distributing these books. And we accept them as authoritative. Um, but, in, but instead there is... Uh, if we introduce that, well, if you don't understand something, you don't agree with something, you can just ignore it and reinterpret it. That's why I'm saying this is the, it's not accepting Prabhupada as we always used to. Guru Mukha Padmavakya Chitete Koriya Aika Arna Kori Homayasha. So if we, Srila Prabhupada says that, well, if it's, if it's in his purport and his book, and if we decide there's something wrong with it, well, that undermines the whole basis of Prabhupada's authority. Then what, what is the authority of his books if you, can, if you don't think it's authoritative? You may say, well, it's just this, but not everything. I accept everything. Then we become, then we make ourselves the Acharya, and then we become, it's up to us. Well, I like this. I don't like this. Okay, I... This is authoritative because I accept it, but that's not the way to approach the Shastra and to approach the Shastra which is received through the Acharyas. We can't just pick and choose according to what we think is right. We have to accept the teachings of the Acharyas because we are in the darkness of ignorance because we accept the conclusions, uh, we accept the teachings and the ideas and the conclusions of materially contaminated people, and these uh, again, this this whole idea of uh, egalitarianism, why non-hierarchical society, which is anyway a myth. There's no non-hierarchical society anywhere in the world. This this is a recent idea in modern society. It's not the teaching of the of uh, the Acharyas. So, if we think that Prabhupada, if we think that then, well, yeah, I accept everything, but he got this thing wrong. Uh, then everything's up to question. Now, more recently, the same Swamiji, um, has stated that uh, even though Srila Prabhupada repeatedly refers to the disrobing of Draupadi in the assembly of the Kauravas, <coughs> and even though this is uh, this incident is it's extremely it's one of the most well known anecdotes in all of Vedic culture. It's very widely known. It's accepted, for instance, in the, uh, well, by everyone. Everyone knows about the disrobing of Draupadi. It's, and uh, in the Madhva Sampradaya, where they are extremely strict to only accept something which is in Shastra, we find at the Krishna temple in Udupi, there's a picture of Draupadi's disrobing. And there's there's a, there's another story which is less well known, which is also uh, there's a picture of that in the Krishna temple in Udupi. That's the headquarters of the Madhva, 
Madhva Sampradaya of uh, Krishna he, cutting his finger and Draupadi gives a little cloth from her sari to tie it up. So the, the, what? So it said that be, she gave a little cloth and then Krishna in return when re, gave her unlimited cloth. So these stories are interlinked. And there are many... Um, I mean, all the Acharyas refer to this. In the first verse of the Govinda Damada Stotram, it refers to Krishna Draupadi. Uh, this by Bilva Mangal Thakur refers to uh, it, every... But our Swami, who is very learned in Sanskrit, says that, well, it's not directly stated in the Bhagavata. So I, uh, he writes, I seriously wonder if this incident took place based on evidence from the Bhagavatam. And he he doubts also that, um, or he questions Yudhishthya. In, <coughs> and the, the whole uh, gambling match and everything. So, uh, actually the GBC when it was brought to their attention, actually took this up with him, which the, the thing about uh, game monogamy, and that, that's been over 10 years that this paper's been out and there's been no rebuttal of that. So, um, he states that, uh, I do not deny or reject Prabhupada's teachings on this matter, I simply focus on what I find in the Bhagavatam. So then, but in other words, well, whatever Prabhupada says doesn't really matter to me that much, but, uh, I just see, I just see the Bhagavatam directly and I don't find any disrobing of Draupadi. So, even though Prabhupada says so and so many Acharyas say so, I don't find it directly in the Bhagavatam. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes in a purport of his in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he writes, the Parampara system does not allow one to deviate from the commentaries of the previous Acharyas. By depending upon the previous Acharyas, one can write beautiful commentaries. However, one cannot defy the previous Acharyas. The false pride that makes one think that he can write better than the previous Acharyas will make one's comments faulty. Uh, so uh, the, the, now in 2008, uh, you may remember that the GBC of the International Society for Christian Consciousness passed a resolution that th there should be endnotes or, or appendixes to Srila Prabhupada's books to explain certain matters therein, which <laughs> resulted in an outcry. And uh, it was a request, because they don't have the authority to do that. Prabhupada set up the BBT and the GBC separately. And the BBT refused to do that. Although maybe in future it will happen, because we have... Uh, it, it was on this some controversial point that uh, a, a woman likes a man who is very expert in rape. So it's a controversial statement, no doubt. But... Um, Various protests came up about that. I'm going to need to plug this in. This. Can you find the socket? And uh, then the idea came up, well, if we, if we have to write something in the books for everything that people don't like, then the, the, we're going to have to write, it would just become huge, because almost every statement of Prabhupada goes against everything that the materialists believe. I could propose a much more, uh, an easier way, and it's also a way that we could probably sell many more sets of Bhagavatams by making them much cheaper, just leave out everything controversial. There wouldn't be much left. You'd have to leave out most of the texts also. <coughs> um, 
So that was rejected by the BBT trustees, but who knows what will happen in future because our uh, people are growing up, they go to school, they learn in school all this nonsense that Prabhupada came to deliver us from. And the the degree of nonsense uh, is ever increasing in the name of advanced education. So people are brought up with this nonsense education. Srila Prabhupada com compared that to the, the modern ed educational institutions, to slaughterhouses. Uh, so people are brought up with this, and, uh, well, I can move out there a bit. And uh, when when people join the Krishna conscious movement, they're not told there's anything different. Uh, they're, they're, oh, there's, there's an extension. When they join the Krishna conscious movement, um, they're not yeah, they're not told that actually what you learn in school is a lot of it is a bunch of rubbish. Yeah, it goes. They're not told that, and although the statements are there in in Prabhupada's books, um, there are so many devotees doubting so many things in Prabhupada's books that they're not taken. It, it's consider that, well, we don't have to take them as very authoritative. And, uh, in fact, one devotee told me that he said many devotees in in America, what he sees, they don't read Prabhupada's books, um, not only out of laziness, but because they don't like them. There are too many things in there that they don't like. And this is, this is extremely serious from the point of view of what may be called a traditionalist like myself, but others seem to think, well, that's good because people like us, and we don't, we we don't conflict with others, and uh, in this way we can all be nice. And one major problem of this, of course, is that uh, by promoting liberal humanitarian ideas, we may think, well, that'll make us more open. Apart from the problem of not being in line with Srila Prabhupada and the Shastra and the tradition, uh, we may think, well, that'll put us in line with many people in America and that'll make us more open. They'll be more open to us. But it puts us at, it pits us against um, many other people all over the world who, who are opposed to this liberal humanitarian philosophy, such as, for instance, um, traditional Muslims, traditional Christians, and traditional Hindus. There are still a few here and there. <coughs> now, uh, why I got charged up to speak on this, even though I've spoken many things like this in the past, why particularly now? Because in the good year of the Lord, 2014, if he's still around, the Lord, he's being... Uh, relegated to non-existence by the atheists. We should be combating the atheists. So, uh, on a uh, on the official voice of the ISKCON movement, the uh, Dandavats website came, just recently came a an article titled Is It the Woman's Fault? And it uh, Therein is stated twice exactly the same words that even though Prabhupada writes that a failed marriage is usually the woman's fault, if a woman has a good husband, she will stay loyal. So even though Prabhupada said this, actually, the opposite is true. That's the implication. That it's, is it the woman's fault? Srila Prabhupada says, yes, it is usually. Who likes to hear that? I'm sure all the women don't like to hear that. And uh, it, it's, it may seem very harsh. It's probably the kind of thing which we're not supposed to say in our modern ISKCON because we don't want to upset anyone. But Srila Prabhupada did write that. And if we are to be followers of Srila Prabhupada, we have to uh, accept that. To accept that, we have to understand that. 
It's not just a matter of blindly accepting it. So, um, again, I've discussed all these issues in that seminar, women, masters, or, or mothers, that there is a specific role, there is a certain psychology which Srila Prabhupada talks about, which comes with the male body, which comes with the female body, and if we act according to that, that will um, make our life in this material world more suitable for pursuing the goal of life, which is Krishna consciousness, than if we try to go against that. So, uh, the point here, again, is not... My particular point this evening is not gender issues per se, but the fact that um, we can openly contradict Prabhupada. So the new theology that is, it's okay to publicly disagree with Srila Prabhupada, and, and that's right there on an official GBC-funded website. So I'm just pointing that out. Um, there are others who they they just they don't quote Prabhupada and then contradict him. There are others who just speak their own ideas, which have got absolutely nothing to do with anything that Srila Prabhupada taught us. That's another thing. They they can go on and give a whole speech, and it doesn't cover anything in Guru, Sadhu, or Shastra. It's just a bunch of sentimental fluff. Um, more like New Age stuff, talking about love and peace and compassion and all this kind of thing, with no reference to Krishna and uh, no, no, no talk of the, the purpose of human life, understanding the difference between the soul and the body, the necessity for giving up sense gratification, discipline, surrender, no such thing. Just we should love everyone. We should feel compassion in our heart. So that's uh, another way of taking the uh, taking the movement of Srila Prabhupada just to present something completely different. And of course. Uh, our movement is now presented as being Hindu, and, uh, and there are various Mayavad, New Age, and Sahaja influences, which I've, which are clearly not in line with Srila Prabhupada, and I've spoken on these things at length elsewhere. I won't go into it now, but I just wanted to make that point for anyone who uh, wants to think about it, and... Uh, live their life in consonance with what Srila Prabhupada taught in, uh, rather than what uh, some others might wish that he taught. So that's it. Hare Krishna. That's all for now. I mean, there's much, much to say about this, but like I say, I've spoken about this at length in, in other speeches and I, I just wanted to draw attention to this that we we have a it's now come to this point where it's acceptable to uh, it's acceptable within official ISKCON circles to directly contradict Srila Prabhupada so it's sick what what can be done I don't know. Those who those who should hear don't want to. So what can be done? You can live your life as best as you... If you want to follow Srila Prabhupada, you can live your life as best as you can. Mm. Yeah, please. Um, I appreciate your bringing up this topic. Um, as an old BBT devotee, I'd like to bring up one... Thing. BTG? BBT. 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 Um, uh, with the quote about women liking rape, one thing we always kept in mind is uh, we kept a standard Oxford dictionary at the press because that's what Prabhupada learned English from. And that that word has an <coughs> archaic form yeah, yeah. Uh, that meant seduction rather than rape. There's, a, there's an archaic form of the word rape which means seduction, which, yeah. 
But okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think anyone thinks that uh, Srila Prabhupada is promoting or somehow justifying. It, yeah, it, it's counterintuitive, isn't it, that Prabhupada would be supporting something which is uh, horrible. But it's there, <coughs> and it's, uh, it is difficult to understand. And we, in, in some cases, there are cases, there are cases for, cha- of course, this is another controversial topic, but there are cases for change when there, where it's clearly understandable that Srila Prabhupada didn't mean to say that. And a case in point is, if you can give this Bhagavad Gita as it is, a very clear case in point for this is, let me see if I can find that. It's uh, Pitrinam Aryama Chasmi. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. Yeah, which verse is it? That's the thing. Ah, here it is. Chapter 10, text 9. So in this verse comes the line, Pitrinam Aryama Chasmi. So this means that among the the Pitris, I am, Krishna says, Aryama. And in the translation of the verse, um, the translation of the verse goes, Of departed ancestors, I am Aryama. That means the Pitris. Among the Pitris, I am Aryama. So, uh, in the purport we have, There is also a planet of trees presided over by Aryama, who represents Krishna. So clearly, uh, the, whoever transcribed this in the 1960s had never heard of a pitri, and they transcribed there. Is, what should have been there is a planet of pitris. He'd never heard of pitris, but he's heard of trees. So he came out there as a planet of trees. So that's clearly an error. And this is a very controversial subject, no doubt. But uh, I say that it is a... Uh, although there are those who say that to change this book at all is a great disservice to Prabhupada, I would say rather it's a great disservice to immortalize something that cl- that's clearly wrong, that Srila Prabhupada clearly didn't say or intend uh, and it, it's an easy fix. But in the case of this uh, women like rape thing, then it, it's, it's, it's not very clear what to change it to. So uh, better that devotees write their own commentaries. Another point is that's in the fourth canto. Anyone who reads that far will have understood that Srila Prabhupada is a great authority. Uh, Anyone who reads that far will be uh, deeply interested in the subject matter. It wasn't until many, many years later that this came up. It wasn't an issue for many, 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 many years. It somehow became a big issue. Yeah. It seems like, again, since we're talking controversy, this cancer in this kind, I don't think it's new. I mean, I think a lot of us think it started at least back in 1978, shortly after Shula Prabhupada yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. And like, for, like you mentioned Dandavats, recently there was an a, a, a article on Dandavats from an ISKCON guru saying that devotees who felt that, you know, cows benefited by offering the milk were hallucinating. So, I mean, there's many, many... Many controversies. Uh, just changes in the philosophy or that anybody, I, I mean, you know, that... Because people are taking their own disciples, they think they can say anything or change it mm. the way they want to. It's kind of disturbing. It, exactly, it's disturbing, yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the, especially considering, I mean, anyway, the, the law of parampara, or the way the parampara works, is that a disciple repeats what his guru says and represents his guru. And in the case of such an overwhelming Acharya as Srila Prabhupada and uh, 
We should be extremely careful in presenting Srila Prabhupada uh, as he is. Also considering that Srila Prabhupada, as he himself states, that his um, command of English or his usage of English is not up to the... Or it wasn't perfect English, which is why he also wanted... One major reason that he wanted his books edited... So there are multi, there are various considerations, but uh, I mean, even if even if one is to take up a point that well, I, it seems here that Srila Prabhupada, this we may we may try to categorize, but we have to be something that Srila Prabhupada said, but we have to be extremely careful to do it in a way that doesn't appear that we're just saying, well, Prabhupada said this, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, th this article I'm talking about where it's introduced with Prabhupada said that uh, failed marriages are generally the, due to womanly weakness, but actually, I mean, if just if, the, there's, if, there, if that was reworded, it could be reworded in a way so as not to appear to undermine Srila Prabhupada's statement. We we have to be very very careful about this. We I once I mean anyone who reads Srila Prabhupada's books will come across many things which we may find difficult to accept unless we accept. Actually, for me, when I first read Prabhupada's books, I think many of Prabhupada's disciples had this experience that we already understood that what we learn through the school and what's on TV there it, it's. They're misleading us, and uh, I'd I'd read many many books on folklore from all over the world, and and it just seemed obvious to me that there are many things which people in traditional societies knew about and interacted with, like fairies and hobgoblins and ghosts and things like that, which are denied as being impossible. So I didn't have any problem reading Srila Prabhupada's books, but still something and all the things he said. And I, it seems to me that the problems only came up later. It was when Prabhupada was present. I remember the um, before the fifth canto came out, one one devotee, he said, oh, he'd heard it was just re it was just released in America. And I, he was in England, and I was in England. He was saying, "There's all these things about the moon being further away than the sun." Although Prabhupada already said that many times before the fifth canto came out, he said, "So many devotees are going to bloop." So, he, but. Most of us read it. Okay, all right. So, yeah, you were going to say something yes, uh, about the book controversy. This is a typical Islam controversy where people are so much polarized on both sides, mm. unable to appreciate mm. the middle ground. Mm. All they have to do is ask, "What would Prabhupada do if he saw this mistake?" Obviously, he'd say, "Fix it." Yeah. But he certainly would have authorized five thousand changes mm. in his book that, com that completely change the meaning in some circumstances. Uh, yeah, I I feel that there's grounds for a third edition, but then who will agree? Then who will agree? Who who will uh, who will come to that middle ground? If we could have agreed, Maharaj, we could have saved a million dollars. Yeah, but of, of hard -earned money. how many bucks would need this to print with a million dollars? Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, in hindsight. But as as far as yeah, I I I'd be happy to see a third edition in which there's you can say some middle ground because there are many things. It's not just the I mean there's the spelling of Bihar. Should it remain some misspelling from uh, Higher Griever who was editing it liked his beard. So when Prabhupada wrote about people in the mode of goodness regularly shave, he shaved it out of the purport. Um, there are uh, quote. Things which are supposed to be in one purport, which are another purport. We have Queen Kunti quoting the Sri. It's supposed to be Queen Kunti, but it's actually the Sri Ishupanishad. Much of the science was left out because the devotees just couldn't handle it. And so there are many, many things. Uh, and so maybe there, should, there are many things which should be changed, and uh, quite a few things also which are questionable. So it would seem to me that. A th Third edition would be a good idea, but then who, do, who who's going to who's going to agree on this? Well, this is the 
and then there'll be no end to it. But on the whole, I, um, I, I'd rather present the present edition because I don't want to present to, to people that uh, there's a planet of the trees when someone will say, especially in India, I mean, the, the, uh, the capital city of Ritvikism in the world is um, Bangalore. Although the Ritvik camp, which is supposed to be the solution to all ISKCON's problems, yeah, they're all fighting among themselves. So, um, and they're distributing this edition, and Bangalore happens to be among the uh, non-religious cities, you could say. It's not, it's not founded on the basis. By religious cities, um, I mean places like Tirupati and Udupi. So among the non-religious cities of India, it's the place where there are more pundits, Sanskrit pundits, uh, they're, they're, they're Madhvas, they have a big school there, huge school, a school where they actually teach their philosophy. They teach computer science nowadays also. And they, they're digitalizing all their old works. So there's the Madhva Sampradaya is probably the Sri Sampradaya and of course the Smartas and yeah, Smarta, Shaiva, they, they all get thrown in one can and Mayavadis and all that. So, <coughs> uh, and in that city, they distribute this book where it says there's a planet of the trees, where it clearly should be the pit trees. So if people say, did your Swami, he said that? And then you can say to them, well, no, our devotees in 1968, oh, then why don't you correct it? It should be corrected. It's a, so I'd be very reluctant to distribute that but it's it's one of those things which is just going to go on and on for generations which is a good re good reason why there's the archives because as far as what whatever core materials are there we can see but there, and another point is that uh, within parampara there is a repeating the message of the previous acharyas and there is also uh, making it understandable and relevant to one's own disciples and the general public in the present situation. So we find that Srila Prabhupada's presentation was very different to that of Bhaktisdhan Saraswati Thakur. So there is not changing doesn't necessarily mean that we say everything and do everything in the same way. Just like in ISKCON, in the early days, it was uh, something that we almost prided ourselves on in that we would throw all the cloth into the laundry together, take it all out, and it, odd socks was the norm on Harinam, if you wore socks at all, even though the temperature was below freezing. Um, but should that is that a sacred principle that we should... Fight? We've got to do it the Prabhupada way. We've got to have odd socks and uh, wear clothes that don't fit us. And that's, That wasn't the Prabhupada way. That was the hippie way. But uh, it was a nice spirit that we had. So there will be differences in presentation. But there, there are certain things where you, you just can't contradict your guru. And making it relevant um, also doesn't mean that we change the whole tenor of our movement to be to resemble something more like new age as they call it which is some new age is uh, westernized mayavad without the principles that actual mayavadis follow it's hinduism without the piety <laughs> without the inherent piety hey, mm -hmm. referring to one maharaj who is proposing that if we don't find it in the Bhagavatam, it's not existing. This is one of many specious, insubstantial arguments this person makes. You can make the same argument says we shouldn't eat Big Macs in the Bhagavatam. Show me in the Bhagavatam where it says we shouldn't eat Big Macs. The Bhagavatam says don't eat meat. Uh, what's a Big Mac? It's a big hamburger? It's a big hamburger. Mm. I, uh, it's a silly argument. I, while I was conducting research for this book, Bhaktisthan Vaibhav, I was in the house of one disciple of Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur. 
And uh, I was speaking with him, and his wife brought him tea. And I said, how come you're drinking tea? And he said, well, there's nothing in Shastra against it. And that's a fact. There's nothing in Shastra that says you shouldn't drink tea. And he said on on the Vrajamandala Parikrama that was organized by Saraswati Thakur, it was allowed. That would have been allowed for people who weren't initiated, who just wanted to come along. Srila Prabhupada also made allowance for that. He said, in our guest house in Bombay, we could, the tea could be served, although it's not been done for many years. Or it could be brought from outside. So Srila Prabhupada made that allowance. But that, does, that doesn't mean it's meant for the disciples. So there is, there's always ways to interpret this. Uh, once, once I said to a god brother, this was years ago. Uh, I asked him, "Why? Come on, why are you getting up at eight o'clock every morning?" Prabhupada said, "We should get up early." And he said, "Well, Prabhupada also said that his father used to rise late, so overriding all the the, the dozens of." dozens of clear instructions from Prabhupada that we should rise early, he found one thing which wasn't which was descriptive, not instructive, that my father was a pure devotee. He used to rise a little late. He didn't say how late. <coughs> so um, I, I was I wanted to ask your opinion on something which Rita Prabhupada said. And mm-hmm. if that it is subject to the influence of time. Sri uh, Prabhupada spoke about the differences between democracy and communism. Mm. And he spoke about you know Third World War coming. And he said that b- between communism and um, democracy, because of the degraded condition of of, of the of democracy, people in the democracy, that communism would eventually become victorious. And so, I'm just wondering if the political situation when Sri Prabhupada was present is a lot different from the political situation now. Mm. We see in uh, Russia thousands and thousands of devotees. And we see in India that the Krishna conscious movement is like, will take it off like anything. And I'm just wondering if a statement like that would be affected by uh, a, change, a change of time, a change of spreading of Krishna consciousness, a spread, um, you know, like, well, I just, well, I'd like to get your opinion. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, observation and question that goes with it that uh, Srila Prabhupada, he said that the communism would prevail due to the degraded condition of the world. But he also said that if the, if if my books are distributed then in in Russia, then the communist regime will fail. Will it'll be overcome? So he he did say different things. But uh, clearly, some of the things that Srila Prabhupada said were. Uh, generalizations. Conceptually, it seems that Srila Prabhupada was more inclined to communism than democracy because he gave the idea that uh, of spiritual communism, which is actually closer to Vedic culture. What's the, uh, the, the, the core tenet of communism that everyone works according to their ability and takes according to their need. So that's very close to, uh, that, that's closer to Varnashram than democracy in which everyone is uh, competitive and pitted against each other, actually. It, it encourages competitiveness. But Srila Prabhupada didn't like communism as it was practiced because it was openly atheistic. So, yeah, definitely Srila Prabhupada, some, some of the things he said were, we could say, indicative. There is a, there is a 
quote from Srila Prabhupada in the Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, in which Prabhupada, he was put in some TV studio and put in a room with no windows, so there's no light or air, and Prabhupada said by the year 2000, everyone will be living underground. So we can say that that's indicative of the trend of society, but not it's not in writing and it's not it's not in his books and it's not something that uh, we have to take as absolute. Not not necessarily everything that Srila Prabhupada says that we do have to take as absolute, but we should take it seriously. Yeah. You want to come here so I can see you? It's a bit strange having a voice from behind. Just come here. This is a normal thing that people sit face to face when they speak with each other. Maybe just move a little this way. Otherwise this lady may feel embarrassed. Could you please just move this way? He doesn't understand. Maybe you should move in a bit. Although... Although in modern devotional society these things don't matter because we're all the same. Recently I went to a temple and it was all mostly all South Indians in America. They're all sitting all mixed up and I say, this is this is not what you learned from your own culture. You learned this coming to America. In India they wouldn't sit like that. So so I, I, I asked them to just sit separately and they said, oh, okay. Yeah, please, what were you going to say? Well, I missed the certain portion of the beginning of this conversation. Nevertheless, I find it interesting. And, uh, it's like a, something along the lines of which I've been thinking about some time in a more... In, in a more practical sort of execution of Krishna consciousness than like an, a definitive understanding of like esoteric subject matter of what was being said and how to properly express that, whether to leave it or change it. But it is a overarching theme that I've been seeing. Like Prabhupada would say, uh, somewhere, they're like, okay, this is the best thing to do. And they say, well, okay, you know, if you can't do that, then do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, who who can do and can't do what? Uh, like, there's a, going to be a gray area there that no one can really quantify as far as, like, uh, if everyone wanted to be held to the highest example of what is absolutely perfect behavior that no one would be uh, executing per se that. Except that if we understand that if you do well enough to some point at which you're actually engaging in like an honest representation of what is desired by Krishna outside of the very uh, esoteric meanings of the what he may or may not have said or wanted for any one particular person in one particular situation to give an expression which was responsibly uh, sincere, right? Okay, could you put that in one short sentence? <laughs> in one short sentence, uh, I find it an interesting paradox of uh, perhaps the nature of like words and like people, uh, that these things would be confusing. And uh, I think that uh, you know, it's interesting to discuss. And I maybe you know, as far as like keeping original Bhagavad Gita or new editions of Bhagavad Gita, like you know, if there's you can't. Well, it, my point is, is that if you give original Bhagavad Gita's and uh, you, you can't you can't put it in one short sentence 
What's your po What's your point? Okay, could you make them say one at a time? So I c yeah, you, do you want me to respond to it, or you just want everyone I, to, well, or do you just want everyone to hear your points? I kind of wanted to make points because, like, I thought they were valid as I was listening, and you were posing some sort of like. Uh, okay, so now you're speaking for the benefit of everyone. I would like to think that ideally, I would be speaking; it would be beneficial. Yeah, but then we have to see also what's your qualification to speak. Because in, in, in this group, as far as I understand, the qualification is that one should be a strict follower of Srila Prabhupada. Otherwise, there may be so many opinions. Okay. So. Anyone can give opinions, but uh, presumably I've been asked to speak here because I'm considered to be a strict follower of Srila Prabhupada. So, I don't know if everyone wants to hear what you have to say. If you want to make a point that, that for me to respond to, that's one thing. But if you want to give a lecture, maybe you should uh, just organize it another day and uh, say, I'm going to be speaking and invite people to come. You don't want to hear what I have to say. I'm not opposed to hearing what you say, but uh, you, I, I'm requesting you to state it succinctly so I can respond to it. But you, you have, I, you have rather given the point that you just want to speak and everyone should listen. Not exactly. I kind of was going over what you were saying in my head, and I wanted to express it in the hopes that I could, uh, that I could formulate it in the allotted time of the conversation where comments are being. Mm. Uh, given and then uh, perhaps make a few statements that I thought were valuable in the process. Okay. But my point is that in this circle, in this circle, we, we don't subscribe to the idea that because someone thinks something, we necessarily we have to th listen to it. That is, in the in the big broad world of America that is theoretically the way things go on but not in the spiritual circles that we operate in so it's a big world do that in class you know when people even brought up incredibly atheistic positions that they had you know he uh, gave them a little bit of time I, I know what I'm doing is a bit rambling because I'm trying to kind of that's why I'm asking you to put it broad, just just put so. it briefly but if you want to, if you want to have a rambling long talk, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying you shouldn't have a rambling long no, talk, I but I just suggest that you schedule it for a different evening. Invite everyone to come, and if they want, they can come. Well, as for something I thought that would be helpful and also succinct, uh, I wanted to make the point that it's not necessarily like uh, if. If you're distributing original Bhagavad Gita, that there isn't going to be some resource by which people could understand the different discrepancies of a specific point. For instance, in some sort of forum where people had the ability to voice and like kind of a Wikipedia. Yeah. Utilizes. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Mean, Good I idea. That it was uh, exclusive, where it's like simply cut and dry. Like. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Anyone else or everyone's fed up with this discussion? Sorry, I just want to thank you so much for Master the Woman and Master to Mothers. Um, listen to it over again and um, it really helped me a lot personally. Um, and I just uh, also wanted to just point out that because um, I've heard a lot about the homosexuality discussion too. Uh, people have uh, just approached me asking about you know, what Krishna conscious take is on that. And um, I, I just, to put it bluntly, just that um, if we're supposed to not have illicit sex, then isn't homosexuality just basically illicit sex? We're supposed to only have sex. The practice of homosex is proscribed. It's, it cannot but be sinful according to Vedic understanding. It's a tough one because uh, in the modern world, in, in this part of the modern world, to to even suggest that there could be anything wrong with homosexuality is considered to be axiomatically evil, not just wrong, but it, it, it's you're you're up there with Hitler. 
who, by the way, just in case you, you probably all know, uh, it wasn't only Jews he killed, it was, uh, well, there were Poles and Ukrainians and Russians and Germans also, but uh, he also didn't like uh, homosexuals. So they got killed also. Yeah, it's it's a very tough one because there is this idea. But uh, what can we do? I mean, we 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 can't change the teachings of Shastra because people don't like it. There are many things. Just like uh, we hear so much about mistreatment of people and how the, the these people have been mistreated. These people have been, but. Uh, well, what about the literally millions, if we take together all the cows, chickens, turkeys, pigs and sheep, and in India, goats, that are killed every day? We have all this idea of being the compassion for the humans. So there, there are many things that, just, that we're practically at every step where we have to oppose the modern society. It's much easier to go along with it, but then we don't present Krishna conscious as it is. Another thing, Mark, in regard to this whole exploitation in the media of rape in India, statistically there's more rape in America. Yeah. Per capita. Yeah. But as you said, as I you think even know. not just per capita, but just overall. But that you don't hear about. No, no, you don't hear about that. It's, as pointed out in this book, Breaking India... Um, the international news, say there's a riot in India, then it's it's presented in the news as if, you know, well, what do you expect? It's just India, you know, it's just normal. But if there's a riot in Los Angeles, it's like, well, it's, it's, it's unusual, it's, it's an aberration. It's, you know, it's just, here in America, if, if there's a riot, it's just something that's unusual. That's not really what the people are like. But in India, well, that's normal. What can you expect, those uncivilized? But that's, that's the attitude with which it's presented. So, Hare Krishna, I really, I, I'm, I don't actually like to speak about these things. What I spoke about last night was much more relishable, but I think that it is important to do so. And there may be, undoubtedly there will be many different outlooks on all these things. As our friend here has different outlooks. But, uh, we have to find that association and understanding by which we can advance. We have to seek out the truth. Just try to understand the truth by approaching a spiritual master. That should be our that should be our aim. That should be our focus. And another thing we should understand, individually and collectively, this should be the motto of our life. That How are we individually going to advance in Krishna consciousness? How we as a movement are going to be successful? As a movement, we're not going to be successful simply by amassing books and temples and even making many disciples and followers and having many numbers. The core principle is yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada, yasya prasada, nagati katopi. If we can satisfy Śrīla Prabhupāda, then all Krishna's blessings will be on us. And if whatever we may do, we may be big famous swamis and have lots of big buildings and so many things. But if we don't satisfy Śrīla Prabhupāda, then... It's all useless. And that's that's the uh, that should be the the core understanding of everyone. It's it's just not going to happen. Krishna consciousness is just not going to happen. We're not going to get if we don't get the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, then we we missed everything. So we should be so careful. In all right, there there are things which Srila Prabhupada said which may be difficult to understand. They may be relevant to certain pl times, places and circumstances. Not not everything Srila Prabhupada said, said was meant for everyone in all places. But we should be very, very careful not to just flippantly say that. Well, Prabhupada said this, but actually something else. We should be very, very careful to maintain the, 
the dignity and the the authority of of Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, just, uh, I just uh, heard uh, in Russia a second edition of Science of Self-Realization. Oh yeah, the Science of Self-Realization. Yeah, I discovered that also. They left out the where Prabhupada directly addresses the question of is the Krishna Conscious Movement Hindu or not? Actually, what happened to me, this was two years ago, I was uh, lecturing at ISKCON Kazan, which is a major city in Russia. And then someone asked me the question, via a translator, I don't speak Russian, that, uh, well, should we present our movement as Hindu or not? So then I called for an edition of the Science of Self-Realization, in Russian, because I read enough Cyrillic script that I could find out the article in which um, Srila Prabhupada addresses the question of whether we're Hindu or not and clearly, unambiguously says that we are not Hindu. So I called, I was looking through it and looking through it. Where is it? And then someone brought me an old edition, said, here, you'll find it in this. And then I found it. I said, what, what's it? He said, it's, it's not in there. And then they brought me a new pamphlet, which had been made for mass distribution. They said, here's a pamphlet. Why the question is asked is because this pamphlet has been made for mass distribution throughout Russia. And it is the title is, Who are the Krishnaites? Which is what devotees are called in Russia. So in Russia, and in the first paragraph, the first sentence is that the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is uh, part of the Brahma Madhva Gorya Vaishnav Sampradaya within the Hindu religion. And in the first paragraph, three times the word Hindu was given. So it's they left it out of the science of self religion And then when this was brought, some devotees brought this to the attention of the BBT, they said, well, the science of realization was just put together. It's, it's different essays from Prabhupada. So if we leave it out, watch the harm. But they deliberately left it out and deliberately made a new... They re- redefined clearly in contradiction of Srila Prabhupada. So... The reasoning is, so I'm told that, well, now our movement under Russia is under a lot of pressure, so we need to present ourselves as Hindu so we can get the support and this and that. But then if you're promoting Hinduism, then, uh, okay, we get the support. And then, uh, But then uh, some Amma or Dada or Baba, they also need support. They're, they're getting persecuted in Russia and we have to go and support them. Then we become, uh, and and we can't preach that Krishna consciousness is, is a universal science which transcends all mundane designations because we've accepted one. So there are many problems. It's it's better it's better to uh, keep our status. I may say, well, we'll go back to being persecuted. Although, of course, I don't know the situation intimately in Russia, but. It, it doesn't seem that that's going to come back. But even if it did, it's better to keep our own principles than change. We change and then we change something else and we change something else. And so many things in Russia have changed. Devotees, instead of going out on book distribution, they have to sweep the streets to show that they're good citizens and all kinds of things. It's not just in America. No, no. It's America. No, it's, it's everywhere. It's Part of Hinduism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everywhere, everywhere, yeah. There, I mean, there are so many frightening things in which I, I. Who knows? How long will it go on? We may think Krishna will intervene, but Krishna allowed the, the Kauravas to dominate the Pandavas for, <laughs> for more than 13 years. So, who knows? It's a. 
Prabhupada gave the responsibility of this movement to us. So he said that this movement cannot be destroyed from without, but only from within. Hare Krishna.